you reached out to me because you think the oneness is true and Trinity is not. Exactly. Yeah, well, we're going to see about that. Now, define what you mean by oneness. What is your position? Because there's a variety of oneness. Oneness meaning that there is only one God. And what so, does that mean? Uh, that there's only one creator of heaven and earth. What where, does that mean? Uh, Anthony, do me a favor. Don't beat around the bush. Don't play games. Unless you want to strum and Trinitarianism, then I'm going to take you out. No one disagrees there's one creator, one God. Let me refer you to my question again. What do you mean by one? Jesus Christ is God, period. What does that mean, he's God? I, mean, I can't make that any clearer. Jesus no, Christ. you can't. As a oneness heretic, you're either going to tell me Jesus is God the Father who became flesh, or he's a man and dwelt by the Father. So stop playing games. Get to what you believe so we can then address what you believe scripturally. So, yeah, okay. So Jesus Christ is the express image of the invisible God. So, what does that mean again? So, I mean... By the way, do you know what the Greek term is for express image? I have no idea. Okay. So here you ask the dialogue with me, and I'm just being honest and being nice because people say that I'm mean, and I'm trying to be nice with you, and you're not qualified to have a discussion with me, but that's okay. I'll entertain you. Now, when you say Jesus is the express image of who? Of the invisible God. That's not what it says. Colossians 1.15 says, He is the image of the invisible God. The term express image, you're getting it from the King James rendering of Hebrews 1.3. And there it says, the express image of his person. So you confuse two texts together, but that's okay. Well, I'm only using Hebrews 1.3 for me. Yeah, I'm only using King James Bible, so that's the only one that I have. We're going to have fun with the King James Bible. Okay, now go to Hebrews 1.3 for me. Uh, who being the brightness of his glory in the express image of his persons. See, that's where you get the word express image. Okay. What you said, express image of the invisible God, that's Colossians 1.15. And there it says, he's the image of the invisible God. So now when you say Jesus is the image of the invisible God, in 1 Corinthians 11.7, it says man is the image and glory of God. But man is not God the Father, is he? No, he's not. So what do you mean that Jesus is the express image of God? So in Isaiah says that... that Don't misquote Isaiah 9.6. It's not going to help you. How, okay. Quote for me if I'm misquoting it. Yes, yeah, so you're right. That he is, for unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and he shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. What do the words Everlasting Father mean? Abiyad. Well, that, well, I tell you what, let me, it'd probably be easy. Let me state my premise. Yeah, can you first tell me who Jesus is in relationship to the Father? Because I still don't know what variety of oneness you are. So can you make clear, instead of telling me he's the express image, is Jesus the Father who became flesh, or is he a man and dwelt by the Father? He is. Jesus Christ is God. God became flesh in okay. the form of Jesus Christ. So, okay, so he is God the Father who became flesh, right? God became flesh. But you believe only the Father is God. There isn't Father, Son, Holy Spirit who existed before creation. So make it more specific. When you say God became flesh, even Trinitarians believe that. Is that God the Father or God the Son who became flesh? Well, no, it's only God the Father became flesh. Yes. Okay, see, see, now you could waste you can waste less time if you just be more direct. So God the Father became flesh. So that man is the Father in the flesh, right? Yes. Okay, now we know what you believe, so that you're not going to tell me later. This is why I want you to articulate your position. Well, Jesus is a man indwelt by the Father, because we, we no, just heard no. you. No. God the Father became flesh. God the Father became Jesus, right? Exactly. Okay. Who is the Holy Spirit? Jesus Christ. Okay. What do you mean Jesus Christ? Because Jesus Christ did not exist before the flesh, right? Okay. So, okay. So before you can prove the Trinity, let's look at it from a, a dual standpoint. No, the before Bible. you go to dual, I want to know who the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit came I'm, down upon Jesus. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you. Okay, okay tell so, me who the Holy Spirit is. Okay, so Matthew says that the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. and she. That's not Matthew. You're misquoting. It's Luke 135. It's Luke. Okay, in Matthew said that, Holy, okay, Holy, did the Holy Spirit conceive, right? Overshadowed Mary and she conceived, right? Yeah, well, well, but that means he didn't conceive himself, right? Right, so the point is, is that... You just, hold on, listen to yourself. You're too fast. We just heard you say the Holy Spirit is Jesus Christ. Yes. Then you said the Holy Spirit conceived Jesus. Then I asked you, that means the Holy Spirit didn't conceive himself. You said, right, that means he's not Jesus. So you're not listening to yourself. No, well... Can you tell us who the Holy Spirit is? Yes, just, but let me, let me state it, and then I can help you with all of it to clear it up. All yeah, right. please. So, so we can get to the scriptures. Okay, so before you state that there's a trinity, then we have Don't to... mention the trinity. Tell me what you believe. Okay. Stop I'll mentioning believe. my belief. You don't know my belief. Okay, so if the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary and she conceived, 
that would make the Holy Spirit the Father. So he's not Jesus Christ then? No, he's, Jesus Christ embodies the fullness of the Godhead. So, okay, Jesus now, is so you, you want, I'm going to give you another chance to clarify your position because you're wasting my time. Let's make it clear. I'm going to repeat what you said so you know that you're confused. You don't know what you believe. First, you told us Jesus Christ is God the Father who became flesh. We got you recorded. Now you're saying the Holy Spirit conceived Jesus, therefore that makes him the Father. But wait, Jesus is the Father. The so the Holy Spirit conceived himself in the flesh. Is that what you're saying? Yes. I'm but now who came down in Mary? Jesus did before he became flesh, right? Okay, so now let's go to Acts 20. What does Acts 20 say? No, no, don't go to Acts 20 yet. No, don't no. run. Jesus came down on Mary and caused her to conceive his physical body, right? What? God. Yes, sir. God over the Holy Spirit. And that was Jesus, right? Before he became flesh, right? Well, okay. The Godhead, the Jesus, in terms of the office. You're mistranslating the Elizabethan term for Godhead. In Elizabethan English, 1611, Godhead did not mean what you think it means. See, there you go. Even butchering the 1611 King James Version. I know where you're getting the term Godhead. Acts 17, 29, Colossians 2, 9. I know where you're getting it. No, no I'm going to Acts 20. Acts 20 is where I'm going. Not the word Godhead. Godhead is not in Acts 20. It's I'm in Acts 17, 29. I'm not going to. I'm not going okay. to. Ask for the what are you? I'm going to get you out of here. You know that you're a joke. See, because you can't. You're you're manifesting. Let me finish the point. You said Godhead. The term Godhead appears three times. Acts seventeen twenty nine, Romans one twenty, and Colossians two nine. In Elizabethan English, Godhead doesn't mean what you think it means. Can you tell me what the word Godhead is? In fact, in Colossians two nine, what is the term for Godhead? Because remember, it wasn't written in Elizabethan English. It was written in Greek, right? Right. What's the Greek term? For God in Colossians 2 9, because that's the passage you're butchering. I have no idea what it is in Greek. So why don't you go back and listen? Because you're not qualified to have this discussion. You're wait, yeah. I'm being trying to be nice to you. You're not qualified. You're gonna yeah, get steamed. But, but the problem is let me let me let me buddy, you're not qualified. Say, hold on, I want this recorded. I'm trying to tell the guy I'm gonna pulverize him and his fake God, and I'm trying to give him a chance to go listen. But if you insist, then as you like to get beaten. No, I, now I go to Acts 20 and butcher it for me because okay. you wanted to butcher Acts 20. All right, let's go to Acts 20. Okay, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God, which he hath purchased with his own blood. Amen. No Trinitarian denies that. You still have not proven your case. Okay, so the case is this right here. That There's God, no case. Okay, the God is a spirit, correct? Sure, and he became flesh. Okay. And the Bible says there can be no remission of sins without first the shedding of blood. Yeah, yeah. Get to your point. Don't okay. quote Hebrews nine twenty two. I know where. Just get to your point. I'm, I'm not going to Hebrews there. Okay. I mean, I would just. That's what you're quoting. You don't know what you're quoting. You're quoting to me Hebrews nine twenty two. You asked me where you said where you're going. I already quoted the Hebrews. Saying God shed His blood does not prove Jesus is the Father. It proves that Jesus is God the Son who became flesh. What's your proof that He's the Father? I'm still waiting. Okay. So. We just said the Holy Ghost has purchased the church with its own blood. No, it didn't say that. You just it's butchered the text. It, said to it didn't say that. No, it didn't. It said, wait, to feed. No, it didn't. The, his blood refers to God. That's nearest antecedent. No, if you're going to play games with me, I'm going to bring you the Greek text. I'm going to have you parse the Greek text. Okay, let's read it again. Yeah, read it one more time. Take yeah, read it one more time. Unto yourselves and to all the flock over the, which the Holy Ghost yeah, has finished it. the seers. To feed the church of God. Of God. Wait, wait. Emphasize that. The church of God. Of God. That's a, that's a prepositional phrase of God. So okay, I'm going to get you the Greek text. I want you to parse the grammar for me and show me that his blood refers back to the Holy Spirit, not to the nearest antecedent, which is God. Don't play. You don't know Greek. Don't play these games with me. Right. So, you so now give me a verse where the Holy you. Spirit is God the Father. Okay. Did you say that God... When you said the part was it purchased with his own blood, who is yeah, because we believe Jesus is God who became flesh, but he's not the Father, not the Spirit. So I'm waiting for you to give me a verse that says that Jesus is God the Father. When you say a purchase with his own blood, what is it referring back to? God? It's referring to God, the nearest antecedent in front of your eyes. First uh, Timothy three sixteen doesn't show that. It says God was manifest in the flesh. What makes you think quoting First Timothy three sixteen God was manifest in the flesh? proves that Jesus is the Father, when it actually proves that Jesus is God, who appeared in the flesh, yet he's not the Father, not the Spirit. You're going to have to do better than assuming your conclusion.